this morning? Oh, I haven't read the paper yet. I don't come to life until I've read the paper. <laughs> Bother the paper. I thought you were out here on a holiday. Well, I have to find out what's going on in the world. That's the penalty of owning the biggest and the best newspaper in the country. I have a few days left in which to get to a well-known surf. Then you're definitely taking the clipper back on Friday. But definitely. Well, I'm sorry I can't persuade you to take the boat back. It's bad and me. I'd like to, but you know that clipper gets there faster. Here comes your man Friday. Oh, Kate told with the newspapers. Well, I'll be running along. Aloha. I observe the Sentinel is carrying an extra page of advertising. I guess Gunnigan's new assistant, Harper, must know his business. Mr. Gunnigan knows his business, too, Mr. Britt. He is a first-class managing editor. Sure, I just came from having a talk with poor Gunnigan. That broken leg of his is going to keep him in the hospital for another month. You know, I've been wondering about that accident. Did he ever tell you how it happened? Well, it was like this. Gunnigan was going home one night from the office in a taxi. When all of a sudden, a big truck... <laughs> and the first thing Gunnigan knew, he didn't know anything. I wonder if that really was an accident. I always thought poor Gunnigan was framed. And by some of the crooks who object to the Sentinel's campaign against racketeers. True for you, Casey. With Gunnigan in the hospital and this fellow Harper. Is he in there? No. With this fellow Harper, he appointed to take his place running the paper, the racketeers are getting away with murder. They certainly are, Axford. Now take the lottery racket. You take it. Sure, I hate to touch it. Well, if Mr. Reed were here, he'd certainly lose no time in exposing that racket. Well, why don't Harper do something about it? I don't know. With due respect for Gunnigan's judgment, I don't trust Harper. Well, I got to go to the district attorney's office. You know, he's starting an investigation of this racket. Wasn't that a private investigation? <laughs> Leave that to me. Sure, I did the DA a lot of favors when I was a cop. Oh, it's a good thing you got flat feet, man of action, or I'd have bowled you over. Flat feet, is it? Now, you... Well, sure, now, they're better for understanding than a flat head like yours, Mr. Lowry. <laughs> you young smart <laughs> Cute kid. You better follow him. Why? Where's he go? DA's office. Yeah? Said the DA was going to expose the lottery racket. Hmm. That's for me. All right, come in. I sent for you, Harper, because you're falling down on the job. In what way, Mr. Crockett? I got you the job on the Sentinel by forging credentials for you from a Paris newspaper. Well, if I hadn't known Gunnigan from the early days, he'd never have given me the job, despite your credentials. But the accident I arranged, putting Gunning in the hospital, 
was responsible for him appointing you to his place. You've done very well by the Sentinel, but what have you done for our syndicates? I'm publishing daily a quarter page disbursement ad, giving the winning numbers in the syndicate lottery. Naturally, since I put you in charge of our lottery business... I have as great an interest in all the syndicate business. Listen, Harper, you know what your job was. To dispose of Britt Reed and to cripple his paper so that the syndicate could buy it outright. Well, that takes time. You've had plenty and you failed. Now, I'm warning you for the last time. Britt Reed must be disposed of before he leaves a boy. You may go. Not that way. Use the private elevator. Boys, I'm proud of you. This is just the kind of thing that Mr. Reed would like to see in his paper. Boy, was that a scoop. The DA didn't hold back a thing. Don't forget who did the scooping. <laughs> sure, them racketeers will be shaking in their boots when they read that exposure. What racketeers? What exposure? Well, answer me. Well, it's a story about the lottery racket that the boys dug up in the DA's office this morning, Mr. Harper. Lottery racket? What's it about? Well, I told you... Sure, it's a scheme by which the racketeers take the pennies away from the poor. Well, it's just the type of thing that Mr. Reed will crusade against if he were here. Who assigned you to this story, Axman? Well, sure, I dug it up myself from the DA. He's looking for free publicity when he starts making a mountain out of a molehill. Playing for pennies can't hurt anybody. But we heard the testimony about suicides. Ridiculous. This story isn't worth the price of putting it in type. Next time you start an investigation, consult me first. Yes. Sir. For the next few days, I'm assigning you to the cattle country in the northern part of the state. Is there something up there you want to have investigated? Yes. Find out if they expect a drought this year. And if so, why? Well, of all the questions. Wait. Wait till Reed gets back. There's something crooked going on here. And it's up to us to find out what it is. You know, before we go back to the mainland, we really ought to go to one of those, uh, those native feasts. What do you call them? A uh, luau, you mean? Yes, a luau. <laughs> a cablegram just arrived from Miss Case, Mr. Britt. How do you know it's from Case? She is the only one who has your address. Oh, that's right. Case is my right-hand woman. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll have to answer this. Will you excuse me just a minute? I have oh. brought cable, Brank, and pencil, Mr. Britt. Thank you. The chief says you've got to make a few changes in your staff. Why? They're getting too nosy. Well, I was going to... What do you want? When you found no one in the outer office, why didn't you knock? Cable addressed to Miss Case. I'm taking no chances. This is a job for you, Bordine. Leaving here next Friday, China Clipper. Signed, Reed. Reed must never leave Hawaii. Well, that'd be a nice trip. And a chance to get even with Reed for trying to send me to the chair instead of Kirk for that Sweeney murder. Well, Clipper leaves here for Hawaii tomorrow morning. That'll get you there in time. We've got to talk this over with the boss. Come on. There's Reed now. They're coming this way. I don't know why you can't come back on the boat with us. There's only a few days' difference between the boat and the clipper. Why don't you persuade your father to go back on the clipper? Good evening, Reed. Oh, good evening, sir. Hello, Dad. Well, Gloria, it's time we started. We're going to that luau. Why don't you come along, Britt? That's right, Dad. You make him come. Well, where is it going to take place? At a native village about halfway between here and Halavia. I'd like to go. I'll tell you what, I have some work to do. You go on ahead and I'll join you there later. Grant. Bye-bye. Bye. You know where they're having this luau? Sure. I know everything that happens around here. What's your plan? It's a cinch. I'll get my boys. We'll trail Reed's car when he leaves the luau. We'll jump him. And only the sharks off Diamond Head will know what happened. Sounds easy. Let's get started. Great Scott, it's near morning. If I don't get back, I'll miss the clipper. <laughs> and the clipper waits for no man. Oh. Well, it's been a glorious night. I'm awfully glad I came. Let's go find your father and the rest of the party. Huh? Reed 
and his servant are just leaving. Anybody else with them? Just the driver. Three of them, eh? We can handle them. You drive the car. Can't dump them off Diamond Head now without being seen. What do we do with them then? Let's take them up to my fishing shack and keep them there till tonight. All right? Yeah, that's all right. Hurry up, boys. Throw them in the back room. Trusted. Reed recognized me, and it wouldn't be healthy for me if he escaped. Don't worry. Reed and that Oriental will have a chance in the world. I'll come back tonight and finish the job. All right, then. We'll return to my hotel, and I'll pay you off. I'm pulling out on the steamer that leaves this morning. three guards in that outer room. I heard them say last night that they were going to throw us in the ocean tonight. If we let them. Hey, I recognize the fellow that drove the car. He's Bourdain, a crook. Hey, what about that meat cleaver? It suggests something. Time to catch the boat. And to report Bourdain to the police. I'll bet he's on it, Clever. I'll cable the authorities to meet it on his arrival. Why weren't you on deck? Shut that door. What's biting you, big boy? Brucus fell down on the job. You mean he didn't fix Reed? How do you know? Reed and his pal are on board. That means I'll have to lay low all the way across. Well, I don't see why. You've got him where you want him. And as soon as it starts, you'll be a fool. That'd give the ship's officers four days for an investigation. Remember, I've got a record. Well, then what are you going to do? Lay low, like I told you. Now, the captain's ball takes place the last night of our voyage. There'll be plenty of excitement aboard. I'll be safely ashore before they discover there's a passenger missing. What's the matter, Gloria? Nothing serious. I'm just not a very good sailor, I'm afraid. I think I'd better go to my cabin. All right. I feel better now. I'll rest for a few moments and join you later. I'll call you back to my cabin and see if you're feeling all right. I'm sure I will be. Good night. Good night. 
the matter, Cato? Fourteen is on the steamer. Are you sure? Yes, Mr. Pritt. I saw him on deck and followed him to his cabin. It's room 97 on B deck. Come, I'll show you. Wait a minute. Not so fast. I just can't make it out. He must have known for four days that we've been on this boat. And has made no further attempt on our lives. Oh, that's the mystery. Bordine has a lot of information that I need. Uh, I'd give a thousand dollars right now if I had the Green Hornet outfit. Thank you, Mr. Pritt. I can use that thousand dollars very nicely. What? You mean you have it? Good. I thought it best not to leave it in your apartment. If your building caught fire, or should someone find it... It would be difficult to explain. I think so, Mr. Britt. Now, Cato, Mr. Bourdine is about to tell me for whom he's working. And some other things I want to find out. I'm sure he will, sir. You know, he collected a reward of five grand from the state when he turned in Kirk for Sweeney's murder. And he knew all the time Kirk was innocent. I'd like to return that money to the state. The mask. Don't follow me too closely. We mustn't be seen together on deck. Here is the gas gun. And remember, room 97, B deck. Right. Tonight, the Green Hornet strikes again. <laughs> The Green Hornet. You guessed right, Bordine. Keep your hands in the clear. What do you want? A number of things. But first, why were you in Honolulu? I was sent to Hawaii to put Reed out of commission. What have you got against Reed? Who sent you? Is this a laugh? It was Harper, the guy who's running Reed's newspaper while he's away. He's a big shot in the syndicate. The head of the lottery racket. The lottery racket, eh? With a million a month rake off. That's a pretty good guess. Why are you so interested? That's my business. And you want to cut in, eh? I am cutting in, Bordine, and you're helping me. But first, I want to clear up one matter. I don't get you. I'll explain. Sit down at that desk. Now, write down what I dictate. I, the undersigned, confess to the murder of Patrolman Pat Sweeney. I'm confessing nothing. It wasn't murder. I killed Sweeney in self-defense. Yet you pinned a charge of murder on Kirk, an innocent man who was sent up for life. It was Kirk's fault the cops caught up with me. And you collected a reward of $5,000 from the state for turning in Kirk. Fire's been discovered in the hold, sir. It's almost beyond control already. Fire in the hold? Yes. Order all men at the stations. All passengers on deck. Send out an SOS. I'll go to the bridge right away. me go now? I am asking me questions. Hand me over your wallet. I'm collecting the Sweeney reward money. It's all I got, Hornet, about $2,500. Not so fast, Bordine. Now answer my questions, quick. Who's behind Harper? Who's the head of the syndicate? I can't tell that. I can't. It means certain death for me. Answer my questions. I can't. They'll kill me. I can escape the police, but not the syndicate. Thank <laughs> you.